To me, the ranch is about six miles of sacred water. People do think it's snooty, but it's it's not. It's just it's literally just the master's game, and that's just this is just how it's played. The ranch is a place where you go to gauge yourself on where you're at in your in fly fishing and your own abilities. So I owe my life, in a sense, to the Henry's Fork and a lot of things and a lot of people, but the majority of the people that have helped me along the way have somehow or another have, have some tie to the Henry's Fork. I owe them everything, truly. Brian Gregson is one of the most prolific photographers in fly fishing. If you've picked up any rag, even remotely related to fly fishing, you've seen his pictures. He travels 200,000 miles a year around the globe on assignments where he wins awards for the photography he brings back. Brian, in a lot of ways, has quote unquote, made it. But the Gregson we see today started out very differently. Brian was originally pushing towards a career in professional snowboarding. It was all going really, really good and a lot of momentum. And on a, a, a big accident, I blew out all these teeth are fake. It crash landed. It was off a of, you know, three or four story building in the middle of the night. And, and the next day I went riding again, thinking I could, it was, just, it was just a little flesh wound. And then I absolutely just blew my knee to smithereens. I was pursuing a very high risk, um, adrenaline life, which I love, and I still do love, and I loved every minute of it, but after the accident, I choose to live in a, a different kind of moment where I've kind of calmed myself, and I'm not as eager to uh, go out with a bang just quite yet. At the same time Brian was looking death in the face, in 2010, Utah repealed its stream access law. After a brutal fight, Brian suddenly found the bulk of his home waters off limits to public access. Ultimately, with the lack of available open water, Brian made a choice, one that changed the trajectory of his life and may have saved it. Brian moved to the Henry's Fork River. Island Park, Idaho, population 286, arguably the epicenter of fly fishing culture in the United States. It survives because anglers flock here all season. Those visiting anglers hire guides, rent rooms, run up bar tabs, buy flies, and waders, and rods. They sustain the economy, but they don't create the community. The ranch is like a magnet, and that's exactly why Brian was pulled there. It's a place that attracts larger-than-life characters from all corners of the universe. I got more space than outer space. I started fishing the Henry's Fork uh, in 1989. When I started wearing chrome, that will scare every fish in the water. <laughs> and by 91, 90 or 91, it became a full-time obsession. Thursday night through Sunday, every weekend without fail. When I found out it didn't scare fish and it scared the snot out of fishermen, I cranked it up. Anything bright, anything obtrusive, obnoxious, gaudy, repulsive, I wore. And it gave me more room. <laughs> I really wanted to learn how to fish this river. It's a, it's a really challenging place. I think a lot of people come here to test their angling skills in the dry fly world, and um, a never-ending learning curve. That's what it is. You know, if we talk about Brian Gregson, you know, Brian's a person that's enriched my life because he's one of those special people. Brian Gregson is, is actually a pretty unique individual. For me, I, I know Brian came from very, very humble roots. Uh, neither of us were entitled as, as, as young men, as, and I think we shared a, we share a, uh, perhaps a, a drive that we don't understand. One day, after an unfortunate series of events, Brian, as a young emerging photographer, found himself without a camera. He was devastated. Surrounded by mentors, friends, trout bums, and misfit saviors, the community of the ranch came to his aid and raised a bucket of money to get Brian back on his feet. 
Brian, he was hesitant. And so I think if there was ever a stern conversation between Brian and me, it was when I just took him aside and I said, Brian, you've got to do this. You know, you're, you're almost mistreating these people who really care about you and who believe in you by re refusing to accept some help. Now, this isn't charity, Brian. This is an investment. This is an investment that we have in you. I don't remember how much money it was, but I do think that there were enough people that all wanted to help that they they helped him out, and I think he, he sort of took that little thing and ran with it, and look where he is now. I love fishing, and fishing is my, has been my whole life since a kid, and even more so, fishing is my life, right? Fishing saved my life. I know what it takes to be a trout bum, and the dedication it takes to be a trout bum, and I can't do that. I, I have a responsibility to the England community who believed in me and helped me get to where I am today, that I, I hustle every waking minute. I'm up early, I go to bed late, there isn't a five day work week for me. There isn't a eight hour day with a lunch break. There, it's a seven days a week, 365 days, live it and breathe it and love it. And I do, and I love it every minute of it. But I don't wanna be a child bum. Um, I wanna see what else is out there. <laughs>